So after watching the little fireside chat with Joey Graceffa and James Charles and Nikita Dragon, I had this whole video planned out, but then I saw Angelica Oles on Twitter and I'm like, you know what? We need to talk about two things in this video. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take a look at different topics going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you haven't yet, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. I love interacting with all you beautiful people out there. So before I get started, and I might dive deeper into this topic in a podcast, like here's my disclaimer, okay? I, I want this channel and I hope other channels who do commentary or drama or news can foster this as well. Like we should be able to disagree with one another, have criticisms of one another without hate mobs from the community going and attacking people, all right? So while I will be critical in this video, as I am with some other videos, like if, if you're ever one of my audience members and you're attacking other people, like I don't want you as part of my audience, all right? Like cancel culture is ridiculous, but I think we have to find this balance where we can have disagreements and talk about different things without it turning into this like, name calling, cussing people out fest that happens all the damn time. But anyways, anyways, let's jump into this topic. So yeah, Joey Graceffa over on his channel, he's doing something new and he just had James Charles and Nikita Dragon on there. And they had, it's about an hour long talk. And for those of you who don't know, this week is Suicide Prevention Awareness Week, all right? And towards the beginning of the video, James Charles, I think it was around like the 15 or 17 minute mark, James Charles talks about how he doesn't think he would have survived what happened earlier this year if it weren't for the support group that he had. Like, and he, he elaborates a little bit more. He's like, no, I legitimately don't think I would have survived. I'm so glad that you have that friend group because Me too. especially during your last like whole scandal thing, if you didn't have that, like, that would have been so difficult. If I didn't have that, I'd be dead right now. Like, I, I'd say that, like, not even, like, being dramatic. I don't think I would have made it through everything that went on, like, without them being with me and making sure that I was okay and, like, waking up in the middle of the night to check on me, like, every 10 minutes to make sure I didn't, like, literally do something yeah. dangerous. Right? And we need to talk about that because that is a major part of cancel culture. Like, if you haven't yet, I highly recommend the book So You've Been Publicly Shamed and check that out. Like, if you don't realize that this can happen to anybody, you don't have to be an influencer for this to happen to, like you need to go read this book So You've Been Publicly Shamed. There are multiple stories in that book of people who have taken their lives because of the hate mobs and cancel culture. And this is something that we've seen on a regular basis. So I'm really glad that James Charles opened up about this and discussed it. But yeah, like I'm not saying like he should be immune from criticism, like criticize him. I think that he screws up plenty, all right? The same way that I do, the same way as everybody does, right? But there comes a point where it's just like, ah, you screwed up. And then there's a point of like, you should just not be existing on this earth anymore, right? But we've seen how the online mobs can drive people to taking their own life, right? Like in the gaming community, we just lost Alec Holoka to suicide um, a few months ago. We lost Etika to suicide. And there's a debate on whether that was cancel culture or mental illness or the internet spamming him with clown emojis and everything. Like the reality is, it's just thousands and thousands of strangers coming at you is not good for your mental health. So as many of you know, um, I have a brand new book out called Canceled Inside YouTube Cancel Culture. And something that I didn't talk about in that book and I don't know if I should do a separate video on this because I don't want anybody to be worried. Like, but these thoughts crossed my mind during my cancellation process. But I want to make it very clear. That's nothing to be worried about. Like, for example, I've been clean for seven years from drugs and alcohol. And I'd be lying to you if I said that that thought 
of using or drinking hasn't crossed my mind. Every time I walk into the grocery store, past the pharmacy, I'm like, oh, I wonder what, what, what kind of pills they got past back there, right? But the thought is fleeting now. But yeah, when I was being canceled and had hundreds of thousands of strangers just saying the worst terrible things about me, like, the thought crossed my mind a few times, right? And then I snapped out of it. So I think it's important that we do discuss that a lot of us get these very dark and terrible thoughts sometimes, but it's like, are you ruminating on them? Are you obsessing on them? Do those have the potential to turn into action? Or do they just come in and leave, right? Because thoughts just come out of nowhere. It's just, how are you dealing with those thoughts? But anyways, if you want me to do a deeper conversation about that, let me know in the co comments down below. But whenever I see somebody like James Charles talk about that, or I remember Thomas Halbert talked about that, like I can definitely relate. But anyways, Katie Morton just put up a video for Suicide Prevention Awareness Week. Um, go check that out. I'll link that down in the description below. Um, she has some information in there that may help you help a loved one, or if you need help, maybe you can get help. All right, but anyways, I was uh, you know, on Twitter and Angelica Oles, her, her tweet showed up on my feed and I just wanted to talk about it real quick. In quotes, she says, I hate drama channels and drama. Does yet another interview centered around drama? Are you that boring as a human being that you have nothing else to talk about? And here's just what I wanna talk about. And here's what my disclaimer was for. Like, I am not an Angelica Oles fan and through my own experience, like, I haven't been a fan of mm, a lot of people in the commentary and drama community. Not everybody, like there are some amazing, awesome people out there who are fun and they poke fun and it's just fun, right? Like they take criticism and, and turn it into something fun and lighthearted. But there are certain creators out there like who I'm just not a fan of. And I watch this and I've been reading so many books about like social psychology and everything like that and I'm just like, God, Jesus, like, do people understand what what is happening right now? Like, I just don't get how we are hoisting these people up and giving them massive audiences for like being a dick. Like that's being celebrated now for being a dick. Now, don't get me wrong, like criticize people all you want, but I see countless creators like Angelica Oles in this example, I may do more videos talking about this, where they are just like publicly a dick to somebody, right? And people are like, yeah, yeah, you go girl. And like, there's this weird thing out there where if you're a self-admitted dick or asshole or whatever you wanna call it, like then that's not a problem. We'll let it slide, all right? And it just blows my mind. Like I've talked about that with people like Keemstar in the past. Like just because you own it doesn't mean it's a good thing. And the issue I have with it is because when you have people with massive audiences promoting that, like you're influencing people. So you have these commentary and drama channels, trying to keep people accountable, like, oh, there's such a bad influence for people. I'm like, do you see your behavior? And again, like, we need to just, we need to find the balance. Like, if you wanna criticize somebody, cool. But if you're constantly publicly taking jabs at them, like, that's where it's like, okay, like, this is something completely different. You're no longer just criticizing them. Like, you are trying to take digs at them. All right, but something else that bothers me, Angelica Oles, her banner is her being blocked by James Charles. And it's not just Angelica Oles, like this is some kind of badge of honor that people proudly wear on Twitter. People love, people love bragging about how they're blocked on Twitter. Like, I just don't understand the logic of that, like here. I want you to take that in any other context outside of Twitter and realize how insane that sounds, right? Like what if your friend was like, LOL, I keep calling and texting my ex-boyfriend and he had to block my number. He, he, he. Like you look at that person like, uh, that's not something to be proud of. Or what if you were like, ha ha, look at this restraining order somebody filed against me, ha ha ha. Like in any other context outside of Twitter, you wouldn't be publicly bragging about being blocked from somebody. Like 
I just don't get why that's like an, an achievement on Twitter. And here's part of it. People wear that as a badge of honor because they feel like, aha, see this, this is proof that I was right. Like, that's not proof that it was right. What it's proof of is that person is setting up some kind of boundary with you, all right? Like, for example, don't get me wrong, like people have blocked me on Twitter, okay? Like, an example I'll bring up right now, Taylor Nicole Dean blocked me on Twitter in an emotional state I said some real dick things to her. Like, I can be a dick sometimes, and it wasn't being critical, I was a dick to her. And she blocked me, all right? And when I realized what I did, I felt bad, I apologized publicly and privately, all right? But something I didn't do is run around bragging that Taylor Nicole Dean blocked me like I won an award, all right? Like, I really want you guys to just sit back and think about that for a second. Like, why are we looking at Twitter like it is some accomplishment to be blocked by people? The last thing I wanna talk about, some of you know that I've been diving into politics lately on the channel and everything like that. And I wanna talk about the clear bias, like the absolutely clear bias of these channels that you're watching, all right? So like, let's look at two major American news stations, okay? CNN and Fox News. CNN is clearly biased for, you know, lib a liberal point of view, right? Fox News is clearly biased for a conservative point of view. Is that wrong? Nah, I don't think so. My goal is to just have you be aware of it. Like, just know you're going to get very biased information and it's going to keep you in an echo chamber. All right, you're never going to hear the opposing ideas or views and things like that. And it keeps you in this, uh, in a bad place. Like it's important that we open up conversations, we listen to opposing ideas, and we talk like civilized human beings, all right? But I don't think anybody on earth would deny that, you know, CNN is more liberal, Fox News is more conservative, right? But here's the thing, like when you look at channels like Angelica Oles and many other drama channels, I talked about this the other day, there is clearly a bias. And what's happening is it's creating an echo chamber of this influencer is a bad person. These influencers are bad people. And don't get me wrong, I've said it a million times in this video. If you wanna be critical of people, go for it. I want you, you the audience, to realize that these people are not coming to you with objective points of view, all right? We're all gonna have some kind of bias, but I just hope you realize that you are seeing a very, very biased opinion. Like when a creator like Angelica Oles does not like James Charles, you can rest assured any video she makes about him is probably gonna be unfair, all right? And again, like, I don't care, not a big deal to me. It's just when you walk into it, just like if you walk into watching something on CNN or Fox News, just know that the bias is there. It's not just in politics, it is also all over the place when you look at commentary and drama channels and all that stuff, all right? But anyways, final thoughts, do not, do not reward people purposely trying to be a dick. That's not the lesson we should be trying to put out there into the world. And no, you are not a badass because you got blocked somebody. Nobody out there is, okay? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in other ways, like buying merch and books and all that kind of stuff. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.